I know there are a lot of people that are trying to use science as a club against religion, and particularly Christianity, because that's, that's the biggest threat to people who don't want a God these days. The God of the Bible is the logical candidate for God. If you consider that God is interested in humans and wants to communicate his message to them, Thor just hasn't quite cut the historical mustard. So they're using it as a bludgeon against Christianity. But I would say that Christianity is necessary for not only for the creation of science, but also for the sustaining of science. The scientific establishment needs people to believe in God. It needs its members. It needs the scientists to believe in God. I'm going to explain why in this video. Let's start with the historical argument. Francis Schaeffer said this. I think C.S. Lewis might have said it a little bit. But, you know, historically, what nations did science develop in? It was the nations that were Christian. The Christianity was a, their culture was awash with Christianity. They had a deep-rooted belief that the God of the Bible was God. And what kind of God was he? Well, let's see. It wasn't a pantheon of gods anymore. They didn't believe that, okay, I'm in the mountains. Now I've got one kind of God who may want to do things one way. Now I'm in the seas. Or there's another kind of God who wants to do things another. They no longer believed that. They thought there was, there was one God. The God was a, a unity. And his character was consistent. He didn't change from day to day. So you wouldn't think, well, he'll, he'll have the universe run one way in my parents' day, but it may run a different way now. That, that thought would not occur to them if they believed in the God of the Bible. And if they believed in the God of the Bible, he would be what? He would be a lawgiver. Now put all those things together. Don't, don't think of things as, okay, we have the assumption of all these things. We have the assumption that the universe runs by natural laws. Pretend like you didn't. were not raised knowing that. Pretend like you go from a situation where y you think the gods are uh, just a bunch of folks. They're arguing. They have different motives and goals, and they're changeable. You wouldn't think that nature was run by laws. You would think it was random and chaotic and capricious. So you would not be... You would not think it would be a worthwhile investment of your time to look for cause and effect. In other words, to try to understand the laws of nature. You wouldn't even believe there were laws of nature until your culture got washed in the gospel, submerged in the gospel. And, and so that's why the nations that developed science were the nations that had a certain view of God, a certain view of God that matched with the Judeo-Christian view of God, more the more the Catholic view than the Protestant, honestly, but that view of God. And that view of God produced science. Now, they may be tempted to say, okay, well, uh, what about the Greeks? Well, the Greeks had a contribution, but they honestly, they did not do science. They came up with hypotheses, and they proposed solutions, and then they, they talked it through. They did some experiments, but you, did you notice that, that science, the Greeks helped, but, but science doesn't center on Greece. It centers on areas west of Greece. That's where science came from, and, and the common thread there is not Greece, but gospel. Now, you, you may be tempted to think, okay, maybe we needed people to get to that place before science could uh, take its dominant role in society. But we're there now. We have the laws. We understand there's laws. So we can dispense with the lawgiver. We can just ha search for laws without believing in the lawgiver. We can just, we don't need him anymore. Mankind has grown up, and we'll, we'll take, take it from here. So that isn't right either, and that's where we get to the future. I, what I've discussed is what Christian theologians have and thinkers have put forth in the past. But now we've tried that, and some of them have hinted at this, but 
you think about the philosophies that are making a comeback now. Critical theory is making a comeback, and not a comeback, but tribal. It's basically tribalism, uh, given academic credibility. Critical theory, and it's the idea that you're the intersection of the groups that you are naturally born in and that's all you can be and so you've got your truth some other people with uh, some other intersection some they're members of other categories they've got other truth and never the twain shall meet they're mutually non-comprehensible to each other do you think they're going to agree on the language of science and the meaning of science and the techniques of science no, that they're opposed to this universal truth to we all should bow down. See, when you when you throw out God, you don't just throw out God. Eventually, you've got to throw out logic and reason as well, because what you're trying to get away from is anything bigger than your own desires, not even bigger than yourself, because people often have desires that are destructive to them. And and this is the enshrinement of their desires, not even them, but their desires. So culture, now that they've used science to say God is unnecessary, we can dispense with God, we we have another better explanation for everything. And they kind of don't, but that's the rest of this channel. That's, or that's not this video. So they think, Okay, we, we've got rid of him, so now we're just going to cruise along in our own capacity. No, people are reverting back to their tribalism. And if they don't want God telling them what is true and right when it's opposed to their desires, then they don't want science telling them what is true and right when it's opposed to their desires either. And so they're going to come up with philosophies like critical theory, that give them permission to ignore you too. And it's happening. And there's nothing you can do about it as long as you insist that there's no God, there's no creator, there's no absolute truth. They say, good, I was wanting to do my own thing anyway. And they're doing it. And so science simply becomes a tool for propaganda purposes. They use the credibility of science, just like people use the name of God to try to get credibility and con people. Science is now being abused the same way. Oh, and this is where we get to the, the coup de gras, the, the final blow here, uh, a coup de gras, I should say, the final blow. But we have the integrity of the scientists that run the show to stop science from being politicized, stop science from being turned into a, uh, transformed into a tool for truth discovery, into a tool for grasping power. No, you don't. Not without God. Here's what I'm finding. I, I, right now, uh, there is a professor in a very prestigious school in England, and he has, dis has a lot of research that shows something that the mainstream scientific narrative has said is true for over a decade is actually not true. And that this narrow field of science basically took a wrong turn at that time and has been going down that wrong road ever since and they need to correct. However, even though he's had no trouble getting his other work published, he can't get people to publish most of his work on this. It's too hot to handle. It steps on too many toes. Where is the, now is his evidence bad? No, his evidence is overwhelming. He's right, and the scientific consensus for the last 11 years on this subject has been incorrect. But are they saying, well, we've got to do the right thing and admit that we've been uh, dupes? Because what he's saying is, Back then, you should have made a very basic science check, and you failed to make it, and that is the root reason why you guys went off course. So do we ha cop this big mea culpa, or do we just ignore it and hope it'll go away? Maybe this guy will die before we have to deal with it. Maybe we'll die before we have to deal. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. 
in a view of the world with no God, no accountability, no commitment to the truth. The people running the scientific establishment, in theory, science is supposed to be self-correcting, but they do not have adequate incentive to do that. They don't have the adequate incentive to follow the truth wherever it leads. Instead, they're following the money wherever it leads. They're following the political winds wherever they blow. And people are noticing. And they're losing faith in science. And it's really not science. It's a, it's a political establishment that is losing its way. It's, it's, it's going further and further from truth because they're not grounded to the ultimate source of truth, and that's God. They need there to be a God, and they need to believe in that God, or they're going to lose their way. They are losing their way. Okay, I saw another uh, study. It was claiming that ivermectin did not help people with COVID, and I looked at the methodology of the study, and I, I thought to myself, they've rigged this thing. They've rigged it, and I looked, and it was, it was funded by the British National Institute of Health, which are people who had tried to really kept people from getting ivermectin during the COVID crisis. They discouraged them from using it. They terrorized pharmacists out of prescribing it. They, invite, they would not provide it to people, even if it was available. And they may have gotten people killed. And so they needed a study that exonerated them. And they funded one, and they got one. Only when I looked at the methodology of it, I, it was pathetic. Honestly, it was pathetic. And, and these were very credible scientists. They had all the credentials you could ever want. What did they not have? A commitment to follow the truth wherever it goes. Why not? Well, if you really believe that you're going to be accountable to God for your, your actions one day, you don't do stuff like that, okay? You don't tell people that, oh, we wouldn't recommend this drug when, in fact, it could help them. You don't do stuff like that. But they don't have that conviction anymore. People don't have that conviction. And it's very hard to maintain anyway. It's, it's a rare enough thing, even in churches. Churches are losing their way, too. I'm not saying they're not. The idea of God and the knowledge of God, not just the idea of God, the knowledge of God, because he is is being gnawed at from all sides through propaganda today. It's being gnawed at in churches. And so people are like, oh, yeah, I think I believe, but do I really believe? Their, their faith is wavering too. And when their faith is wavering, they're going to act just like the scientists are acting. They're going to follow the money. They're going to follow the winds of change, the perceived winds of change. And they're not going to take that stand for truth that the giants of history took and turn things around for the better time after time. We're losing that. And so I say to you, God doesn't need the scientific establishment. Science comes from a view of reality grounded in him. The science establishment needs him. They need the people to understand that he is, and they need their members to understand that he is. And if they don't have that, they will lose the battle for hearts and minds. They will lose credibility. It doesn't matter how many times they get their minions to shout, trust the science. It will not be trusted because the people have a view of reality that does not permit that, and their own character will be of such a nature that it will not permit that. Thank you so much for listening, and may God bless you.